Hi, and welcome to the Business of Building Applications. This is a course for people that are business leaders or entrepreneurs. So we've covered several items already in this course, and we are on the last of our chapters. So we are going to look in this video about 12 trends that I see in the next decade or so regarding mobile technology. My name is Shad Sluter, and I teach computer science and software development at Grand Canyon University. So if this looks interesting, make sure you subscribe, and then you can come to class with me on a daily basis. So let's get started here. We're talking about 12 mobile tech ideas that are coming or developing in the near future. And so some of these are here, but they just don't work very well, and others will grow in popularity. So with the first one that I'm going to put on the list is cloud computing. And cloud computing is far more than just running a server on the cloud. It means that you are able to offload a great deal of the work that your phone does as a low-powered device and put it in the hands of supercomputers. So the best way to show you what is available is just to go to cloud.google.com. For example, Google is one company that has great cloud services. So what do they do? They have everything from machine learning and AI to storage to ways to make uh, your finances work. So you don't rely on your computer as much as you used to to actually do heavy computing items. So for instance, think of the voice recognition tools that are on your phone right now. So Siri and Cortana can understand you pretty well. Do you really think that your phone is doing all of that voice recognition? No, it's not. They're sending your recorded message to the cloud and the supercomputers in the data centers are doing the analysis on your voice and then immediately send back what they think the text is. And so all of these cloud services are a huge variety of things from voice recognition to all kinds of processing power. And uh, your phone doesn't really have to do the work. It just has to connect you to the place that does the work for you. And so I see cloud computing growing even more than it is today. So the next trend that I see a greater emphasis on is artificial intelligence. And so the major software developers like Google and Microsoft have great tools that allow developers like you and me to simply plug in libraries and functions and APIs and we can just take advantage of it. So I'm not an AI expert, but I can add AI to my phone apps because of these plugins. You can see that this is Microsoft's uh, collection of things. Let's look at some of them that we can understand. So the top right corner, it says text analytics. So with just a simple plugin with an API call on your application, you can do sentiment analysis, it says, on any kind of text that is either written or spoken to you. So you can find out if somebody's in a good mood, if they like your review, if they hate your business, and the artificial intelligent agent will give you a score. And so that, that's an AI example. And you don't have to do much programming other than tell it, analyze this. So the next item here in the center is the AI route planner. So for instance, when you start using Google Maps or Microsoft Maps, you don't have to compute the, uh, the best route that a car should take. There's an AI agent that is doing that for you. And so, like I said, you don't have to be the AI expert. You just have to be a programmer that knows how to access data points and endpoints of APIs. So look at the other things. There's language understanding and video indexing. So you can actually analyze videos as they've been processed. And computer vision down in the bottom is also where you can recognize objects that are in the field of view of a camera. So this is where AI is as of right now. I just see this growing and AI agents becoming better and better and helpful in their in their process of making our apps more and more powerful. So, so I don't mean that AI is going to become like the overlord robots that are going to control our life and ruin our civilization. Uh, AI is just a manner of doing computing that makes the apps work more efficiently. So the next item up is cross-platform development. So. The reason why I say this is going to be a trend in the future is because people are talking about it a lot and trying to do some work on it. But look here at the actual statistics about what apps are in the store today. So you can see that the Android store is much bigger as far as the number of apps go. And the uh, overlap here shows the number of apps that are cross-platform. They've been 
developed in tools like uh, React Native or Flutter or some other tool to have one code base between the two. But the majority of apps are written in a single platform environment. Why is that? It's because that's the best experience for the user and the apps actually work well. And so there's a lot of improvement that needs to be done on cross-platform application development. And so I can only see it as a trend that will increase. Google is putting quite a bit of work into their cross-platform tools such as Flutter and their current edition of Kotlin is compiling the guts of your application right now and leaving the user interface to custom development. So there's attention being paid to this and so I would expect that it's only going to grow from its humble place that it is in right now. The next is mCommerce. So you've heard of e-commerce of course is when we've turned stores into websites. So mCommerce is the idea that you can run your entire store on a mobile phone. There's a couple of reasons for that. One is the idea of responsive design applications. So if you have a web app that w works well on your phone and your tablet and your computer then you can use your phone in a greater degree so when you're out in the store or the warehouse you don't have to have your laptop with you and so that's one reason why computing on the phone is growing and eventually will hopefully replace your desktop for the majority of the purpose that it needs so you've probably seen this in some of the uh, coffee shops you've been to where they don't even have a cash register or a point of sale computer they have a tablet or they have an iPad or something like that. And so that is M computing. That is running your entire business on a mobile platform. And so I just see that as a great way for people to save time and save money and save devices. So M computing will probably be a growth area. So consider that an opportunity if you're an app developer. So virtual reality shows up next. So virtual reality has been a great thing for the future. It has always been a great thing that's going to happen in the future. Right now, virtual reality pretty much stinks. Um, this is how I see it, is people get headaches, they get nauseated. It's as good as the 3D televisions were, what, some years ago. Uh, it was a great technology that the engineers loved and they promoted, and nobody bought them because nobody cared that their TVs were three-dimensional. And it seems to me a little bit like that right now with VR nobody really is buying into this even though there's a great deal of research being put into it so the potential then is amazing if we could get VR that doesn't stink then we are going to have a great uh, view for the future so right now mobile phones um, on like the Google Cardboard are pretty much dead uh, if you go walk through Goodwill or any secondhand store or any garage sale you're gonna see all these uh, headsets that were designed to hold mobile phones and obviously everyone tried them and nobody liked them so what's this what's the current share so if you look at the actual headsets that are designed for virtual reality for playing serious games and you plug into Xboxes or high-end computers you're gonna see that oculus is the market leader they have about 50 percent of the share of all the models that are currently connected to devices this is a uh, data here that comes from steam so we're talking about games here and you can see that Oculus has uh, this Rift and Quest and the Rift 2 or the Rift, Rift S, I'm sorry. And so they're obviously the leader. So if we can get a mobile phone to work as well as an Oculus, then maybe we'll have some potential there. So let's keep it in the future category for a little bit longer. Virtual reality may eventually become really cool and people will adopt it. Augmented reality probably has a little bit better future because as you can see the applications in augmented reality allow you to stay in touch with the real world. You don't have to stumble around in a headset. So the people that I work with at Grand Canyon University tell me that the best experience that they have in their students and working with AR is with the Microsoft tools. So Microsoft makes the HoloLens and they have version 2 out. And you may have seen in the recent news that the uh, Pentagon has awarded um, some contract worth billions of dollars to Microsoft because they have this augmented reality headset that really, really does work pretty well in comparison to the others. So you can see a couple of applications here. Is that Here's a student, it looks like, 
and he is uh, pulling apart the spinal column of a of a model here and you can look at it in detail even though you're you're still looking at the world around you it's just kind of the superimposed image over your glasses so here's another application of the technology that looks interesting so you go to ancient Rome and you see these ruins that are maybe half there or 90 percent destroyed with an augmented reality app you could get to see what the original looked like and so you go to a museum and instead of looking at the skeleton they might show you a more realistic view of a model of the dinosaur so right now AR is kind of quirky it's kind of gimmicky I don't really see this as a necessary item that you have to have and so we'll keep it in the future then now, remember this is a video about what come what is coming what's going to be developed and what's going to improve a great deal so we can still keep AR as a developing and growing technology so take a peek here this is uh, Google's developer website for what they currently have for augmented reality and so you can experiment with this as you can see you can put cartoonish looking models on the street or on the table and uh, they've got plugins that work with Android and Unity and Unreal and iOS. And so, uh, right now, you can do the cartoony kind of a guy standing around your neighborhood. So, go ahead and experiment with this if you want to become a developer that works with augmented reality. Now, I mentioned, so the technology is not particularly useful. I don't know of any apps right now that you must have that make this work, uh, other than Pokemon Go. So maybe uh maybe you'll be the guy or the girl that comes up with a great solution why we all have to have our phones for an augmented reality app so no doubt in the future we're going to be seeing higher bandwidth so 5g networks currently are being rolled out as i'm making this video what will that mean for mobile developers well you're going to see some trends which means you're going to have greater emphasis on connecting to the cloud resources your gps will be more responsive you can have higher resolution video conferencing. You'll have better response times. You're going to have always on services and the IoT revolution, the Internet of Things will become easier to develop and AR will be better. And what's going to then in decrease in trends? Well, if your phone is working well with 5G, then less dependence on the computers. You're going to have fewer disconnections. You're going to have less reliance on the storage in your phone and they promise us that our batteries are going to last longer so less energy consumption so those are some trends that will accelerate as we have higher bandwidth now IOT or the Internet of Things is a growing field and I honestly think that mobile developers are in a great situation to figure out how to use this so I picked off this uh, page here from Microsoft Azure IOT Edge it's called and so with the idea of Internet of Things is that we are going to have a different trend. Instead of more computing on the cloud, we have more computing on devices. Okay, so that's the complete opposite of the trend that I was showing you earlier. So what this means is that they're working, I want to say they, I say we're talking about electrical engineers and computer engineers. They are designing apps that are super low power and have higher abilities to do computing. So if you have these tiny little things that require almost no energy and can do a lot of processing on them, which is obviously impossible for most of us to think of right now, but if that goal is met, then the IoT will it will take that that heavy CPU usage from the cloud or from the core and move it to the edge. And so less uh, computing power is going to be needed in data centers if we can make the IoT devices better and more strong. So what are the IoT devices you ask? Well hopefully you can understand that those are the smart devices. So don't even you don't have to think about the smart coffee pot anymore. IoT devices can be embedded in things like concrete and so you know what's going on with your bridge what's the vibration what's the load what's the temperature so you build things into materials uh, you have home security systems are right now which are current IOT devices but if you think of every object with a smart chip in it from your car to your ballpoint pen to the chair you're sitting on to the medical devices that are embedded in your body all of these things are considered IOT, the Internet of Things. So really IOT is another form of mobile 
programming, mobile application development. So if you're a mobile app developer, then you're in the right field for the future. Wearable technology is going to be more and more. Um, so right now you've got the smartwatch, uh, you've got maybe uh, smart glasses. We've got the tools here right now at Android developing um, SDKs. So you can build your own uh, watch apps right now. Security is going to be obviously bigger and more important than ever in the future. So you're looking at any software developer uh, best practices guide, whether it's Apple or Microsoft or uh, Google, you're going to have best practices in mobile development going on all the time. So make sure that you include security as part of your design. Uh, blockchain is going to fit directly with that increase on security. So currently, we're all using our phones and credit cards to make purchases. So we're kind of on the top row of this model here, where we're the customer and there's somebody in the middle that's taking a cut from everything that we do with our credit card. And what we want to do, or it would be nice maybe, is to use virtual currencies and uh, blockchain type things to just do a direct transaction. So we cut out some costs. So right now we have the model on the left where you add a credit card to your app and then the transactions are made through your bank. So in the future maybe we can have direct payments using Bitcoin or something similar. And so I expect that that will be a trend that will accelerate in the future. Here's something that I haven't actually experienced much of myself but I see it as a trending topic that will be in the next few years is beacons. So a beacon is a small radio server that can tell you that there is a phone nearby and then you can get a message. So in this case, somebody gets an alert that says, hey, would you like a special drink? Now you can do this right now with GPS. And so maybe if high bandwidth and improved GPS accuracies are, are with us, then beacons are really just redundant. They're not even necessary. But it's not a tool that's in common use right now, so maybe beacons will be in the future. So I'm kind of skeptical that this will actually be something that I would care about. I, as a consumer, I want less uh, annoyances, not more annoyances. So I don't want beacons telling me, hey, you got a new alert. I mean, I try to shut off the alerts that I have on my phone already because there's so many. But anyway, beacons are something that people are working on and we'll keep it in the future. If you'd like to see the entire playlist for this course, then take a look here at the link. You can watch through all the things from designing an app to hiring your team to choosing the right platform. So I appreciate you coming. Make sure you subscribe and you will become a better mobile application developer.